As the war in Ukraine continues, one of the greatest needs for soldiers and civilians alike is body armor. Jeff McIntyre is a producer and photojournalist who has been covering the war, and he talked to one local woman who is working to get Ukraine's military what they need. We will talk with Jeff in a few minutes. Here's the story first. Hi, my name is Victoria. This is my husband, Yaroslav. We are from Ukraine, Kiev. This married couple is fighting on the front lines for Ukraine, while over 6,000 miles away in Los Angeles, this woman is trying to protect their lives. I was born in, in Kiev. I, I hope everybody can go and see it. It's just one of the most beautiful places in the world, and the friendliest, too. Lydia Baiklova spent most her life in Ukraine. For she and her mother, it will always be home. That's why February 24th, the day Russia invaded their home, was so devastating. I thought that's it. I thought I'm not, I thought I'm not gonna have a country anymore. And it was, you know, it's in my heart. And when that happened, I was so terrified for everyone that's there, for all my friends, for my family. The nightmare became very real when Lydia's mom, Lena, saw this picture. We used to live there since uh, 1964 till 1990. I remember Grandma. She was always in this window. She was always talking to the neighbors. Still in shock, they knew family and friends back home needed help. Two of my friends then reached out to me and said, hey, do you by any chance know where we can get armored vests? Because we don't have any. Currently, there are about 100,000 volunteers fighting alongside Ukraine's army. This wasn't budgeted for, and these territorial defense units don't have the necessary equipment to protect themselves. Some of these kids who were volunteering, they were using like knee pads from skateboards. They literally had nothing. And I am sure that Mr. Zelensky would provide them with every single thing he could have, because I know his heart is in the right place. But it's just impossible. Ukraine's a pretty poor country, unfortunately. So we get we have some guys from uh, Military Depot here helping us. And Lydia and her family withdrew $40,000 from savings to buy armored vests, helmets, and much needed medical kits. Proper gear isn't cheap. We are buying a vest anywhere from 400 to 550 dollars, and then helmets we buy from 225 to 350. War is expensive. The word spread. Donations started flowing. The whole family is helping pack up the pack up the gear. As did requests from desperate mothers. Do you by any chance have an extra vest for my son and his wife? Like what your son and his and his wife? He's like, yeah, they're both TRO, like Territorial Defense Volunteers, and they need vests. You met her son, Euroslav, and his wife, Victoria, earlier. Thanks to Lydia, we received this body armor vest. And it's incredibly heartwarming. Besides just protecting them, I think that also makes a huge difference in their mental state. Because if you don't have to worry as much about, well, dying, you can do more and you can just live in a more peaceful way, even if you're in a battlefield. As Russia repositions its forces to concentrate on taking parts of eastern Ukraine, the cry for military support has never been louder. But Lydia and her mother remain hopeful. Losing is not an option for Ukraine. We can't. No, Ukraine is going to fight to the last drop of blood, to the last old lady. Like, everyone will come out and fight. And she's ready to provide those old ladies and young soldiers with the gear they need to save not only country, but their own lives. If I can put armor on one more person with giving them more chances of staying alive, right now, that's where my biggest desire lies, except for this war being over, of course. So, yeah, I, I would appreciate every bit of help we can get. Glory to the land of the free and to the home of the brave. Jeff is with us now. Jeff, how many uh, vests and helmets has, has Lydia delivered to those soldiers? So since the Russian invasion, Lydia has provided over $93,000 worth of armored vests, helmets, and other crucial gear. And she just shared some photos with me of volunteer soldiers who just received their vests. And I want you to take a look at these pictures, and especially the smiling faces. And it's really important to remember that two weeks ago, these guys would have been standing there just wearing only camo shirts. Now, these fathers, sons, and husbands really have a fighting chance to not only come home alive, but hopefully secure a free Ukraine. 
Bravo, Lydia. Oh, my goodness. How did yeah, uh, incredible. Jeff, how did the married couple find Lydia? The power of social media. So <laughs> um, the husband's mother just, you know, did some searching and she found Lydia right there on Facebook. And it's really hard to imagine in 2022 that a parent having to scour social media to find a piece of life saving equipment for your kid as they go off to war. But one thing Yaroslav said, but by helping the military, you're also helping the refugees to hopefully come home sooner. And you know, when I was in the refugee camps on the Polish-Ukraine border last month, a question that really hung heavy on the hearts of these mothers and children wasn't so much where are we going, but when can we come home? And every day that Ukraine soldiers are, you know, kind of able to stay in the fight, that's one day closer that they will be reunited with their families. And this is a really key point that keeps Lydia laser focused on her mission. Yeah, and that website, vets for the number four, Ukraine.com, that's where people can go to help, right? That's the spot, and she told me this is one of the most important things she's done in her life. And you can really help her provide this life-saving gear for more volunteer soldiers in Ukraine. All right, Jeff McIntyre, thanks again for this story. Really appreciate it. Thank you both. A key voting block in the race for LA mayor is...